Millie's up again. Happy Monday, everyone. This is The Street Live. I'm Jeff Marks, standing on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer. Jim, uh, we are seeing a little bit of red today. This comes right. after a strong Friday after that jobs number. And Everything's I'm going on in the market today. Stocks like a MasterCard down and Win down and Lindy down. It gets me down, particularly because I saw Lily going up. And I just feel like that what's happened is, is that people are saying, oil week, This I knew this was going to happen. Oil week, economy week, sell industrials, uh, which should, by the way, move our uh, semis up because they are viewed as being counter cyclical and our healthcare up. But uh, healthcare is still being dragged down right now. But I am just aghast that you could have a company like Lindy down because Air Products reported missed. And yet Lindy w w offered a superior number. So I'm urging people who are trying to figure out whether to sell some of ours that because the competitor is doing poorly, give me a break. Lindy's quarter was magnificent. Yeah, and Jim, uh, you have Rusty Brazil on later tonight, yeah. so we'll get a good check on energy later. But yeah. um, but before we do, um, you mentioned you know a, a couple of stocks that are down today, and on Real Money today, you talked about how um, uh, you, you you talked about the question of what keeps you up at night and how there's a lot of negativity out there. But what you wanted to do instead is focus on things that can go right because I think that's lost on people a lot of times. So um, if you're an investor in the market right now, how do you balance between uh, the constant negative headlines with the possibility that things can go right? Well, I think that what what happens is as the market goes up. People are saying, what keeps you up at night? What's wrong? You know, the Fed is the Fed to behind this curve. But what I don't like is it's um, asymmetrical. When things go down, it's the same questions. I mean, I think we should be asking when things go up, hey, you can this, you know, why it's going up? And look at this. Does that Sanders gets a deal? Tyson reported better than expected. Tyson, they had, been, they had missed, missed, missed. It's a big, big deal. Uh, and then you got a situation like with some of our stocks where you have, uh, but DuPont, that people didn't like the quarter. Then you look at it a couple of days later, stock's up four, three, four. Uh, more advanced micro becomes a meme stock. And, you know, you get a meme stock and suddenly you got to stock to 117. Now, it did go up too much. But I'm just saying that we have to start thinking of, uh, of why stocks go higher. And there are so many reasons why stocks go higher that what it does is keep you in the market. Think about all the people who kept you out of the market. Think about all the people who said that, that, that Facebook was going to be hurt by politics, that Apple was going to be hurt because the, the 12 wasn't going to sell, that Google was going to be hurt because of monopolistic pra practices, that Amazon was going to be hurt because of all the different things involving that last quarter. And I think Amazon's going higher. So what I, I look at it and say, you know what, we got to start thinking about uh, why we should stay in, not why we should get out. Yeah, I think those are all great points. Now, Jim, uh, let's move on to the cruise line. So you've interviewed Norwegian Cruise Line CEO Frank Devereaux many times, and they got a big win uh, over the weekend as a federal judge is now, um, uh, they've, they're allowing them to, to they have to, uh, to, to get on a cruise, I'm sorry, uh, you have to show proof of vaccination. This was a big, hot topic debate, um, but it went in their favor. So what do you think about the cruise lines here amid all these rising COVID-19 uh, infections? I'm glad you asked about this because this is what's important. Frank Del Rio came to me, and I've had him on him, you know, I've been on his ships and was, was going to take a cruise with my wife and uh, on Norwegian. And he said to me, I got an idea. Uh, Dr. Gottlieb, who, of course, is CNBC's resident specialist, Dr. Gottlieb said that, uh, you know what we ought to do? We, and he was the former head of the FDA. We ought to vaccinate everyone, that you can't get on the boat without vaccination, and then we eliminate the ability, you know, we just eliminate, we take off the table COVID. And I, I said, boy, is that a great idea? Everybody gets vaccinated. I said, how about kids? He said, we're not going to allow kids because kids don't get vaccinated. We need you to know that when you get on that ship, you are safe. So who fights it? The governor, the governor of Florida, uh, which is incredible and maddening because what's the governor of Florida standing for? The right for you to be able to get the Delta strain. Because we know, one of the things that people don't understand about Delta is that you're either going to get Delta or you're going to get, uh, or, or you're going to get the shot. There's no immunity to Delta. Now, when we first, the first COVID, I'm not saying there's immunity, but it was harder to get. Now you go into a restaurant and someone has it, boom, you're getting it. Uh, a classroom, someone has it, boom, you're getting it. So what, what, the, what Frank was trying to do was give people the security and peace of mind, and the governor fought that. And I'm glad that the governor is a big loser on this because that's outrageous. We just need, we, more than ever, we needed 
people to be able to rally around the idea that you can go on a cruise safely, and you can't other than Norwegian. Jim, we got to talk infrastructure next. So the Senate, uh, we're moving closer and closer to them passing a, a, an infrastructure bill. Um, we're seeing Nucor up today, likely in response to that. But Jim, uh, outside of the classic industrials, uh, there's just a lot of uproar about this package because of what it means for cryptocurrencies and the potential regulation that is within the package, um, calling for some trading plat some crypto trading platforms. They'll have to report uh, to the, I the IRS. They'll have to disclose transactions. So you've been a huge proponent that the crypto market needs more regulation. Yes. Do you think this is a step in yes. the right direction? Well, I just think that oh, I I feel that there's some undercapitalized outfits like coin, uh, like this one tether part, which is a just say, just it's like an exchange. Uh, the, you get to um, you get to an airport and you want to buy pesos for dollars. OK, well, there's a company there that does it. That it's like a stable peso dollar. OK, and they exchange it and they've got the wherewithal. Well, there's a similar thing in crypto called Tether. Uh, and I don't I think Tether was Tether was sued by New York State. They're not allowed to do business in New York State right here. You cannot do business. They paid 18 million, which is weird that it was so little. I think that gave them the credence to continue. But uh, my friend Deirdre Bosa did a very critical piece about them two weeks ago that's available on CNBC.com. And I just think that they are at, at the core, the the weak link. And so I want them to have to explain what they own. They have some commercial paper. We can't tell what it is. Uh, we don't want anyone to be weak link. And if you get some regulation, what would happen is, is that you would have a Coinbase, which is much more public, about what they own. You would have a, a, everybody be just be like banks. Of course, no one wants to be like a bank. PayPal doesn't want to be like a bank. Square doesn't want to be like a bank. But we need some sort of regulation because I have the feeling there could be a collapse in crypto if we're not careful. Yeah, and it is interesting amid all this that crypto is uh, Bitcoin is rising to about a three month high. So it is it is interesting how all of this is coming out. Yeah, yet I, it's I think, still rallying. I think people kind of said, you know what, this is what we got is what we expected. So now we can rally. Uh, you do have the uh, the cheerleaders in force. Um, I have a very big position in Ethereum. I'm thrilled today. I am not going to take profits. I switched out of Bitcoin to Ethereum uh, after I bought a, a really nice piece of property and I'm going to let it run. I'm playing with the house's money. All right, now let's talk about a company who has some Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Tesla upgraded to a buy at Jefferies today, 850 price target. Um, what do you think about the upgrade? What do you think about I, I, Tesla in general right now? About the upgrade. Look, I am pro Tesla. I mean, now I'm pro Tesla and pro Bitcoin. You can say, what are you, 18? What are you, like a <laughs> Robin Hood guy? Uh, but uh, I just think that Tesla uh, is, that China will be good, uh, that our country will be good, uh, that uh, China, that, uh, Europe's good, but the problem is, uh, will their pickup truck be as good as the Ford Lightning? And we're along Ford, and I think uh, Jim Farley, the CEO, is adamant that his vehicle is better than te than Tesla's. He's been critical of the Tesla vehicle. I know he thinks it's ugly. A lot of other people think it's ugly. Uh, but I think that, that that's going to be the only thing that I'm worried about for Tesla. Otherwise, just stay along it. Yeah, it's interesting. Jeffrey, so they go to buy on Tesla. They lower their price target on GM, but they also increase their price target on Ford to $17. So that's always interesting on the dynamics yeah, between those three players. I've got to tell you, I was upset that Ford acted, stock acted as it did because that was a massive boost to the out, out years. And Ford is uh, 6.9 times next year's numbers with a lot of uh, electric vehicles. And it's being brought down by GM, which has many of uh, many separate issues, including a Malaysian factory that stopped production because of COVID that Ford had very little exposure to. All right, Jim, uh, we didn't have a show Friday, but uh, we got the jobs number and one of the big standout outperformers last Friday were the banks. You've been tweeting about the banks that maybe that oh, the, the big banks. rally there uh, could be signs of a maybe a, a sooner uh, a, a, an interest rate hike yeah, sooner than it's back then. And we do have the Fed at Jackson Hole later yes. this month I, with the I August FOMC. People, I'm a stock person, but I want to urge people right now. If you don't have a mortgage on a property, let's say you have a, even if you have a free and clear property, like I had a free and clear property, I got a mortgage on it. And I did that because I got three and a quarter, and I think that that is going to be a fantastic rate, 20-year fixed. Again, I don't typically do this, but that's great. That's a great way to invest. With a, with a uh, let's say interest rates do go higher, you're going to be able to invest a, invest that money at a better rate. So I am um, not in treasuries, but in you know, I'd say PepsiCo stock or something. But I feel strongly that this is it. The train's leaving the station on mortgage rates.
All right, that's the show for today. I'm Jeff Marks. We're going to go to the Daily Rundown for Action Alerts Plus members right after this. We'll see you tomorrow.